Hi, my name is Chris Greenway. I'm a senior product manager working on Calman Calibration Software, and today we're going to do a quick walkthrough of the software. On my screen here, you can see that I'm opening the Calman for Business. Calman for Business and Calman Homeware are pretty similar. I'll walk through, talk about a bit of both of them, how they differ, what that's in them. But in general, the walkthrough of the software is going to be pretty much the same in, in each case. You can see the Calman startup screen starting up here. Um, we'll show the, our version number. And then once we're open, the default state of the software is we're going to open up with this Start Session dialog. What that does is gives you a chance to track all of your calibrations. We store a database of calibrations. You don't have to use it. It's an optional thing, um, but you certainly can. What the benefits of using our, our database for the calibration tracking is that you can do things like put keywords into the description, search by those. You can search by a client if you're a professional that's doing calibrations as a service for, um, for clients. You can search, um, can enter in different uh, information for different calibrators, for example. For the sake of today's video, I'm just going to close that out. We're not going to actually start a uh, session and save it into the database. I'm just going to walk around the software, kind of show you where the different parts are. Up in the top left corner, we've got our main menu. We do have that start session. That's, that'll take us right back to where we were. Uh, we can also save our calibration sessions here. Common setup to use workflows. Those workflows are meant to guide you through specific calibration tasks. They can be for analysis. They can be for calibrating certain display types. They can be more gener general calibrations if you're doing a manual calibration. So in there, they, our calibration workflows are organized by what what their purpose is. There's our analysis workflows. And again, those are just meant to do certain types of measurements. We've got our color match, our color volume analysis. Uh, we can do a computer monitor check, and we can do a contrast ratio test, and then we've got our HDR and SDR toolkits. We do have calibration workflows that are meant to be more generic. And these are intended for manual calibration, but they're still meant to guide you a little bit through those processes. You can do 3D LUTs. We've got a uh, broadcast monitor, computer monitor, display walls, HDR calibrations, uh, an ISF and uh, dedicated calibration, MediaTek calibration, Netflix computer monitor uh, and video monitor, onset display calibration, uh, pa calibration for patterns, and SDR manual calibration. And then once we get to display specific, these are our auto cal workflows. These are intended to work with specific displays. And those displays, what what we do is we do have integration with the display. You can, uh, when we get gets to the calibration portion, you can click an auto cal button. The calibration will uh, will go through on its own. We have an introduction workflow, and then we have in our toolkit here. We just have a meter profiling. We can we'll talk about meter profiling in other videos. Um, what the benefits are there, but that's where our meter profiling workflow is. It can help guide you through that process. If you are editing workflows, and this is a feature in the ultimate license. Uh, you can save the workflow template. That way you can change, make changes to our existing workflows, or you can create your own, and you can save those changes and have your own customized version of the workflows. That's really helpful if you want to do, always be doing something a little bit differently than we tried to set it up for you. Um, and you can you know, often save yourself some time if you have a special process that you want to follow. We do have reports in the application as well. These are reports that show you the final calibration results. Those calibration results, these are what we have available for reports will vary based on licenses. So in the home licenses, we don't do reports because you're doing calibrations for yourself. Um, but if you are looking at our professional software, we have reports in there. And again, the ability to edit, customize those reports is something that we do have in the ultimate license. We've got a couple of other tools in here. The one I wanted to make sure I pointed out here is the licensing. Obviously, we um, do have a place to license our software. I already have my license installed for this for this video. Uh, you can see I've got my ultimate license showing up in here. But if you were to add a different license here, we have our license ID and the license password. Go ahead and activate it in that in this panel. Walking through a little bit more of the workflow, I am going to open up uh, one of our workflows to just make sure we have something loaded as we go through here. So walking through the Calman UI on the left hand side here, we have our uh, workflow overview panel. This is where it's going to show us the steps that are in a workflow. This is our toolkit workflow that I'm showing right now. It's a nice general test test toolkit. We can check and see what's going on on the TV or monitor. On our left hand side here in the overview, you can see all the different pages that are going to be in the workflow, different tests that can be run. In a workflow that's more guided to a specific calibration task, the intention is that the, those steps would be run in order. So if you are running the steps in order, we've got these back and next buttons in the application. You can follow those. Make sure you're stepping through the calibration process kind of as it's laid out. The reason for that, obviously, is that we want to make sure that you're following steps in order so that the, uh, the calibration process is going as expected. You aren't doing one step that will then 
negate something you did in a previous step. Up along the top, these are what we call our hardware control tabs. These tell you what you're con connected to. So I'm not connected to any hardware at the moment, so you'll see that that they all show up as the, with this yellow bar. If I am connected to hardware, they'll show up green. And we do have connect by default to some simulated hardware just so we can see things happening if if you aren't connected to real hardware. And I will do some measurements here in a minute uh, with the simulated hardware. I have the simulated meter connected here. This is where we talk to our pattern generators or our source. Uh, and and here's our display controls for if, we're, if we are connecting to a display to do one of those auto cals. And then off all the way to the right, we have our settings and properties panels. These, these can get pretty deep. They have a lot of different op application options or workflow options. In general, uh, for most cases, you probably won't need to go in here and edit things. The workflows are set up so that the options are fairly well preset for most use cases. And when there's some variability, we often put steps within the workflow so you can change those options. Um, again. For example, this SDR toolkit that I have open here, you can see that we have a lot of these options built right into the workflow so you don't have to go into a side panel and ac to access those. But if you do need to access those, if you do want to change things, we've got some basic options for the workflow, things like what color space targets you're going to be targeting and measuring against, if we're in full or limited range, and what types of data points, uh, sample sizes we're measuring. Some of the advanced options can include things like setting black and white level specific dedicated targets or offsets. Um, we do have advanced measurement options. These are things that like our full field pattern insertion, which is something we use to stabilize measurements on different displays. And then application preferences. These are things like how the application is going to start up, how it looks, if we have do or don't have sound effects on. So a lot of that type of stuff, in addition to like how the data formats are going to show up, if you're going to use Kendall's per meter squared as your default, or foot Lambert's, or um, something along those lines. All right, and then back into, as I said, I, was, I do want to show you taking some readings. And what I wanted to also show is some of the, our button array. So this is a, just a grayscale measurement page within our SDR toolkit. Again, pretty standard workflow here. I'm going to I'm going to take some measurements with a simulated hardware. It is just simulated data I'm putting in here, but I wanted to show what the charts look like with data coming in. So you can see that it's taking measurements. We're running through. And while it's doing that, I wanted to talk just a little bit about what what uh, else we see on this screen. So obviously we have all of our charts viewed here. We have a data grid that's going to populate. It's going to show us the numbers that we're actually measuring so that we can have a really good idea there of what the actual numbers are. And then down in the bottom, we have a button, our button array. And this is our classic button array. It's our default. Uh, in here, we have our stop. So if I started a series of measurements and then I press the stop, it will stop after the next reading. Um, we have a read single if I want to just take one single measurement. I'm going to click on our source slider here and take a measurement. So you can see that that at 85% here, I just changed and we got a new measurement. Uh, we have a read series. Our read series just reads the entire sweep of what's on that screen. And then we've got a read continuous. Read continuous is just that. It will take keep taking measurements. So if I set this to read continuous, you'll see that this chart um, here, this is our single point for where I'm reading. You'll see that this one's updating. You'll see that my other ones where we're showing the range of readings I just took are also getting updated as that goes through. And then the last button over here that's active is our auto cal button. The auto cal button uh, right now won't do anything because I'm not connected to any real hardware. So it will get, say this operation is not supported for this device because it's simulated. Uh, if I was connected to a device, then it would give me an option to start an, automa an automated calibration. And then I already did mention our back and next buttons. One other button I did want to mention down here was our specialty patterns button. This specialty patterns button allows us to bring up different test patterns. What shows up in this list will vary depending on what you're connected to. If you're connected to a specific generator, the specialty patterns list will be gated based on what's actually on that generator. So that's where you can find, you can go in and, and load up things like color bar patterns or or uh, contrast ratio boxes or something like that, depending on what you're looking at. I did mention the source slider, but I'll speak to it just a tiny bit more. This source slider is all along the bottom banner here of the workflow, and that is set up so that we, you can you can select different levels, quickly toggle between, and again, in, as an example, in this particular on this particular calibration layout, you have a single point option, so you can kind of see a little bit more detail of it. that's each specific point that you took measurements of. That's the basic walkthrough of the CalMan UI. Thanks very much. Thank you.